Hi, and welcome to Tykes TV. Uh, we're going to have Joel and Sam's view on the game today. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a depressing one, like, because yet again, it's another defeat and it's another week going by. It's going to be less and less likely that it looks like we're going to be in championship, but going to have uh, Joel and Sam's take on it uh, today, see what they're thinking it. So, Joel, over to you, mate. Uh, what do you think of today? What what went off in this uh, weird game? Uh, it were a nothing game to start with, to be honest, mate. I think I think we all knew going into it that what the outcome were going to be. Hmm. I'm quite surprised. We only conceded one, to be fair, or expect or expected an absolute drubbing, to be fair. But yeah, yeah just, there's just nothing back to front. There's there's just nothing there at all. It's like watching paint dry. <laughs> it yeah, was. Yeah, it was. I mean, what I, what I couldn't get over is that you look at players and that what were on the bench, it's like, oh, we're going to come on and make a difference. In fact, well, you know, I know Aidan Marsh came on, young kid, but we've got ne- nobody really to take it with Scruff and Necker out of it to make an impression or whatever. Recognised players wise, I'd say they're only Walton and Benson that. Hmm. Um, Walton's obviously a keeper, so he can't do it unless mm. Colin gets injured. Yeah. But apart from that, there are only really Benson on bench that could have come on and done something. Obviously, he did, he did come on at one point, but he could have, to be fair, mate, he could have sent Ronaldo on it once to made a difference. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Literally. Um, Bournemouth, Bournemouth had us in the pockets all game. We, we couldn't get near him. And I've noticed especially over the last two or three games that I've watched, but we seem to be giving opponents so much space compared mm. to when we've got ball. Yeah. It takes us it takes us four or five seconds to close close people down. And sometimes we're not even there then. Whereas when we've got ball, we saw it against Forest the other night. Yeah. Every time every time we got ball, we saw it again today. Every time we got ball, there's two or three players around us. It looked like they were giving them loads of space today. It did, no, it did because just... we 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 were at, we were I was sat an old with an old bloke behind me and he was sat with his grandson and even he kept turning around to his granddad he kept saying granddad why is Zaka chasing down why are they backing off why are they chasing him and I'm thinking if a, if you want like that can see and just talk yeah. about you know it, 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 like you said there we're, we're passing ball about, about and we we want pushing him over you know we're making it easy for him yeah that's it. I even said to a couple of Bournemouth, Bournemouth lads who were going, going to West stand this weekend through Gates, I said, easy three points for you today, <laughs> lads. Mm. And they just laughed. Yeah. And I, I think deep down the knew they were yeah. expecting to beat us. And there were no way we were going to get a result out of that today. Um, you look at Scott Parker and all, I mean, decent manager, like we're at Fulham, and he's come to Bournemouth. And you can tell it, it's a well-drilled, organised side because I have a pass ball about, pass and move it. And we're, we're hard to break down after that. Once we've gone one now up, right? He said earlier, uh, we said it off air. Surprised that you know Bournemouth didn't go, you know, two or three now up because we could have done it on a different day. I was surprised it was just one now, to be fair. We got away with it, to be honest. One now flattered us. Hmm. But again, there's an, there's another school of thought to say they didn't get out of second gear. If the if they'd have wanted to go on and score more, I think they could have done. True. Quite easily. Yeah, very true. Um, like you saw, like Steve Cooper came out of an eight, mm. one three and He's still demanding more of his team. Yeah. But, Standards, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. The one three and out, and yet still wanting more. And as soon as that yeah. happened, all the way through the game and all, you could hear a chance of this content up in uh, stands and that. Come we out, come we out. And as as game are going on, you, you knew it was just going to get was You know, we were bubbling of it. You know, if something was going to happen. It were a it were a funny atmosphere today and all with all that going off. Yeah, it, it was a weird atmosphere and like I said, it's people people are not daft ever. They can see what's happening, can't they? Yeah, I think attendance really surprised me today. To be honest, I'll I'll be honest with you, I didn't really go today with any enthusiasm. I mean, all, today mm. the first time we've been in ages, weren't it? Mm. I can't I can't honestly remember the last last game I physically went to, and that's not because. I don't love the club. It's not because I don't want to go. It's because of the situation, situation. the club's in. 
I know that when uh, I were at Ponty and we started coming down and they were just like coming, I think they wanted to try and get to over to West End so they could go yeah, over and make that, a, a protest. That's like. what the aim was. Yeah. We all started in Ponty End because I was sat in Ponty End myself. <clears throat> they all started in Ponty End and they were heading towards West. I thought, I know what they're heading for here. Mm. And uh, listen, Fair play to them. Every single one of them. It might have only been a small protest, but we've got to say that somewhere. And these PMG, Conway, and the rest of them need to go. We well, I got to- my well, I got my phone out and I zoomed in in area where you know we've been only sitting West End, and all I could see were James and uh, Gene Crane and Khalid. Well, no, I didn't see no Conway, no Lear, anybody but just them sat there. And I thought, well, that's as it all be. We're not even, you know, in attendance knowing <laughs> gonna... it's for club. You <laughs> know what I mean? Gonna see him way, though, are you? No. He, come, he comes out when he's when everything's going well. I was going to say, unless we're in the playoffs or out like that, or yeah. on a decent cup run, big tie would be there, wouldn't he? And he, even then, he come out and after we finished fifth and said it were a, were a poor season because yeah. we didn't sell anybody. Yeah. What are the priorities of this club? I know. I never um, look at that performance today. We need, we need bodies in, we need leaders in, don't we, to be fair? Yeah. Um, we're, sat, we're sat here looking at a Moroccan 21-year-old from FC Mets on loan. Yeah. Who's well, not really done, you know, ripped any trees up over in France, has he, uh, at Mets? When you look on his uh, stats for season, it's like... 24 goals and 16 assists for Nancy or something stupid. Mm. If, if they're going on experiences, games played, then you may as well just get a guy that's played 500 games in conference for what difference it makes. Yeah. Yeah. And I I saw comments the other day, like, crying implemented about spreadsheets and Moneyball and all that, and there's people saying, oh, crying did the same. There's one difference with crying. The one major difference under Patrick crying, and that was that, yeah, we sold players. Yeah, we sold his best players. We've always been that way. But when when it came time for when we needed experience, he went out and got it. Oh yeah. You look at you look at four or five years ago, brought AD White in, he brought Adam Al- Am- mm-hmm. Adam Amel in yeah. on loan, then get him a contract and it turned it turned the season around. We went mm-hmm. from bottom to playoffs and got promoted. Yeah. And won the JP team process. So for them saying that Crime started the system, I agree with it on one level, but there were a difference with Cry. He this... recognised when we need what we needed and where, and he went out and got it. This is what gets me when people say it was all this under Cry, and, and I like to say, yeah, it, it it was same or similar, but at the end of the day, Patrick Cry had like one club, which was Barnsley. But you look at Conway and his, you know, Chinley and all that. We've got another six clubs, so they're not necessarily well, keeping well, behind the bounds a bit. Well, they're bothered about others, aren't they? So they've got no connection. So it's like. Oh, if we're not really doing out here, we'll go to Belgium or we'll go to France. And whereas Patrick Crime, this war is club, you know. And like you yeah, said, beer, Eddie White, what... Adam Amel, he brought him in because he cared. He knew what he, that... he didn't want it to work. That's what it needs. It needs one person devoted to the club because mm. all, all it is to these owners is a portfolio thing. It's a business, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. All they're here for is to make money. And then once they've, once they've made what they need, so. If they feel like they're not getting no else out of it, then they'll bugger off. Yeah. Well, we can't, it's like hotels. It's like if you had, like, say, six different jobs, you can't gear your best, your all, to <clears throat> each of them six jobs. You only can gear to one job and focus on it. And this is, for me, how I look at it, same with these. They can't, they're not really bothered about as Obviously, we want to make money, but we don't really bother about results or what we do. We just see what we can make profit-wise because... That's all I'm looking at the rest of the clubs, what how much profit they can make. I'm not bothered about players, it's how much can I sell a player for. I'm not bothered exactly. about results. Exactly. And it's even down to even down to managers putting buyout clauses in contracts. Why mm. would you why would you put a buyout clause in a manager's contract? Mm. You're just money or but, money focused on that. Bring a manager in, give him a four or five year contract, let him let him build a team, let mm. him build a let him build us up, move us forward. Because for me, if you're putting a release clause in somebody's contract, you're you're half preparing yourself for them going like a twelve month down line. Yeah. And that's what's happened for the last three or four years. Yeah. There's so many, so many things wrong with the way the owners are doing things. And I'll be honest, I watched 
in different different stages. I watched Khalid's response to the the fan questions that he did with oh, yes, yeah. trust. Yeah. And to be honest, they're laughing at me. I was just laughing mm. because we've set, we we're two days away from end at window. We we haven't signed anybody. We've brought two players back on loan that we've hardly seen for the last mm. 12, 18 months. We've kept we've kept bloody Herbie Kane down at Oxford. Yeah. When he's ripping trees up. When we're desperate in midfield, we're desperately short. And again, it's another it's another monetary situation. It's a financial thing. Mm. But according to Khalid, we're improving because we've got new girls and chicken flatbreads. <laughs> How deluded can you get? That's all the bother about, isn't it? It's like they're wanting this fan experience and all this kind of stuff, but they're too busy. I, I, I guess business, but they're too busy all in press about signing up new sponsors and sponsorships and this other. I get it. It's, yeah, it's bringing money in, but we're not, it's like what we're seeing on pitch. There's no improvement on pitch. There's no reinforcements. We're dying on pitch, but it's all right. We're, we're signing. We're signing a sponsor up. Really? Yeah, we've got all on back at shirts. Big wow. Yeah. Wow. Seriously. Mm. It's on pitch where things need to improve. Or there's going to be no fans left. There's going to be no fan experience because there's going to be no bugger there to see it. Exactly. And it's a fair few people that said it's a fair few people that said about and all about season tickets about renewing. And that's what we're thing. If if things stay as they are. I've I've been a season ticket holder for the last two years. I got one. I got one after after we got promoted. And understandable because mm. I really believed that he went man to take us forward. I enjoyed his football. He got the town. He were he had a connection with fans, which yeah. to be fair, I've not seen even when Eki were in charge. Mm. I mean, they were only here six weeks, and they were already in Garrison. We in England top on. Yeah, that just that was just the mark of the man, mm. and people are on that. Stendhal didn't get things right in championship. His tactics were crap. Which yeah, he made some he made some tough decisions. He made some questionable decisions. But when you have a transfer window like he had, half of players was meant for under twenty threes. Mm. They get into a main first team. He wanted experience. He got kids. Yeah. You can't survive in championship with kids. And that's what he said, didn't he? When I think he was pressed in a way when we, we I think we got bet. Yeah, I think what it for one or something. Yeah. And he came out in press and he said, I'm needing, he more or less called owners out and said, I'm needing some help here. I'm needing some, you know, I'm needing some men in with boys. And not long after that, he got sacked, didn't he? And that's because yeah. he, he, he spoke. But for me, I respect him for saying that because he knew what he wanted <laughs> doing. But again, don't, the board don't want to spend money. So we'll get someone else in. And it's like, you've got to back your manager. Yeah, you're all this press about richest owners in league. We don't see a penny in it. Where's that, the money? Yeah, that's what gets me. Stone, if we're supposed to have Richie Stoners in league or up there with Richie yeah. Stoners in league, where's the money? Yeah. We're, 20, we're bottom of the table. Derby have had a 21-point deduction and they're above us on goal difference, yeah. which, by the way, is a massive big up to Wayne Rooney and shows what job he's done. Yeah. I said and to Luke. Fair play, fair play to him and all he's turned that Everton job this week to stay there. Yeah, and a lot of people in his position at that point would have been jumping ship. So mm. fair play to him; he's got he's got he's got a pair, and that's what we need at this club. I said to look at, wrong, man. I said to look. Um, I think it was a couple of days ago. I said I can see them stopping up. Uh, they're playing at the minute. I mean, they've had all these transfer embargoes and, like you said, points deduction. I can see them stopping up. Basically, just because they wanted to fight as a team, they they they're playing for one another. Whereas we look at ours and it's like they look lost. Even we managers stood at on sidelines and stood there looking when and it's like, what's happening? There's nobody knows what they're doing. What direction are we going apart from down? There's no leaders, mate, on no. the pitch or off it. No. Anderson Anderson came out before Forrest and says, I've got a lead team, and it was his mistake that led to the first goal. Mm. I mean made you go from there. You couldn't write it, mate. You can't write the story of this club. And to be fair, from a Barnsley fan, I hope, I hope Derby do stay up because they deserve it. Yeah. To get to where they've got to, with a 21-point deduction. Yeah. It takes some doing. Odds have been stacked against them, aren't they? Big time. Yeah, I mean, exactly. after today's performance, we're going to be going into, I think it's Wednesday now, Fort Cardiff game. 
Oh Bear, birth baited for their lives. I, and to be honest, I, I can't. I just obviously I'm going to game, but you, you try to get you some up for game, but I, I can't. Well, can't. we beat, we've struggled today, didn't we? We've been saying that. The, so I'll be honest, it's like I say, it's not because I don't love the club. Oh, but mm. the reason I'm not going is because I can't, I just can't do it. Mm. I can't subject myself to it every week. Mm. It's and I've I've said to Sammy, unless we get get an ownership overall, even if we're going down anyway, mm. if we get new owners and they show some ambition, get a proper manager in, support him with some players, and we look like we're going places, then I'll renew next year. Yeah. But if if things stay as they are, there's no chance. I think I'm there'll not. be a fair few. I mean, I'm guessing hundreds, maybe a couple of thousand will probably be the same and say. What's the point? Because they're just taking his money and doing what they want with it. They're not investing in club. They're just taking it for their own benefit. This this year, though, it's not really going to affect them because they've already got season ticket sales. So it's next yeah. year where they're going to start feeling it. Yeah. Oh, it's next year where they need to start feeling it. I mean, we're going to lose about seven million quid if we go down in TV money. So that yeah. straight away is like alarm bells, isn't it? Seven million quid. So you know what's going to happen there. What players we've got left, what's got some value, they're going to go to more or less maybe money and balance books for that. And that were that were another thing, and all that came out from from Q and A, Paul Conway when he came out and said, "You're into players playoffs cost us half a million. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like it, more or less complaining it, about as, it, wasn't it? Yeah. As, as if it's as if it's worst thing in the world. Mm. It's highest it's highest place we've been since forty two thousand. Yeah. And he's he's come out and said, "Oh, it cost us half a million. Big deal. Mm. We we're two games away from bloody Premier League." And, and think about money, yeah. what would they got there? Yeah. It's re- that Juffin playoff game is it's worth about 180 million or something, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's I don't know, like I said, I I really but don't know where we're gonna go from this. It's I can't see of, where the next goal's coming from. I can't see where the next win's coming <laughs> from. It's ridiculous. I don't yeah. I think everybody's like disillusioned like now and to hear protests starting. Two days to transfer window, you know. I'm games going to, I mean, there. games going to be coming up thick and fast as well because games got more postponed. You know, the Stoke game, they're going to be all sides to come up. So it's like, yeah. we, like you said, where's next thing going to come from? I've not got a clue. Team, mate. It's going to point under 18s or something of a one five nil today or something. Yeah, <laughs> I'd feel that. I'd feel them against Cardiff. They can't do any worse. No, than what we've already got. No, and I said the other day. There's three agents out there that's better than first eleven we've got on field. His second today had an absolute stinker. Yeah. His second had an absolute stinker. There's yeah. there's players on that pitch that you can just see. They're not the reds not in it. Yeah. That's not in the game, and I can understand why. Confidence is gone. The the act Everything like you just said, the art's not in it. They're just drained, aren't they? It's just someone is, you know, someone. Don't go the way every body language just speaks volumes, doesn't it? When they're on pitch, the reds just go down, don't they? They do, they just they go down and then not being you know disrespectful to Bournemouth. But I think <laughs> if they're up to tempo, they could have got another two or three goals, I think. But for some reason, yeah. they, it, um, they, it was just one they didn't need to, mate. No, I heard people shouting from behind me, it was a training game for a minute, practically what, yeah. They'll not have an easier game all season. Yeah. They'll not have an easier game all season, mate. But, like I said, it just... The only... Like I said, people are calling for big Val's head at West Brom. Mm. And they're in playoffs. Mm. I don't know how lucky they are. Yeah, I, I, I was saying that to my son when we were coming out from game. I said, I think we lost again today at Millwall. And, yeah, 2-0. Uh, yeah, and uh, so I said to my son, I went... <laughs> I'd take him back like a shot, me. I'd take him the back only, like a shot. The only complaint I had under his mail, it wasn't the results. When his system worked, it was clear to see. He got mm. results. He got what he got us where we needed to be. The problem was when he, when we came up against big teams and the better teams and the better quality sides, we got found out. Mm. And it was too stubborn to change the system. That's mm. what cost us in play a final against Swansea, or mm. semi-final, should I say. Because they're fun as art, they found a way to play against us, it worked, and they were too stubborn to change the bloody system. Mm. 
Now we've got a manager here. What don't you even know what assistant to play with? <laughs> it's like complete it's opposite, really, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like either that or he's been dictated to. Yeah, there's, a bit, there's been a fair bit about what's come out in the last he's couple been, of days about that. Yeah, is he? How much control has Poyer actually got? Because to me, mm. he just looks like a yes man. Yeah, and again, that's a that's another area where we should have shown some ambition when mm. Schuber went the first. The first person we should have been on the phone to, or Big Val, sorry, the bit, the first person we should have been on the phone to were Wilder, mm. either Wilder or Warnock till the end of season. Yeah, good job. Wild. What what Wilder's done at Middlesbrough now? We just took him. Yeah, Wilder on a two or three year deal, or Warnock till the end of the season. I detect neither, because both of them have got vast experience. They know how to get a team playing, and the book. Neither of them take any, any rubbish. And that's exactly what we need. And you know what it all boils down to and all, don't you? It's a ball down to money, it's a ball down to board not saying, uh, disagree with him because we can't get the own way because, you know, we want to come wild. Well, they'll want it their way and Conway and Battle don't like it. So it'll be like you just said, the, the driver gets one like a boy who was a yes man and just sticks box and don't cause any waves, isn't it? Well, that's exa- exactly what it is. And that's I why it needs to, to, uh, to change the, the mentality board. at the board. Exactly, mate. The board seem to be under this impression that we want them to spend millions. That's not what we're after. No. And it's plain to see for anybody. The spreadsheet is knackered. Mm. The model isn't working. The plan is knackered. It's completely effed, mate, to be honest with you. I mean, like when something's not working, surely the best thing to do is try and alter it to try something different, not stick with the same system and hope it's going to work. You know, you think, right, work. if it's not working, what can we do to alter it? And there's no there's no signs of that about happening, is there? Shop, tr- Shop tried it, it didn't work. Mm. Boy is trying it. He's not won a game yet. No. And we, we scraped past... And before anybody tells me about Barrow, we scraped past oh, them. Uh, uh. They deserve to win. And yeah. they had to turn on bloody pitch. <laughs> Sammy says to me when they were 2 0 up of the week, this is all the 2 0 up. I says, Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised. You you watch. <laughs> you watch. I says, give, I says, Give him half an hour, they'll be level. And what happened? And they were. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that shows you standard where we are, doesn't it? I'll tell you, mate, well, we're not good enough for League One at the minute. No. It won't surprise me if we go down, we'll end up in League Two. It would not surprise me one bit. You look at, you look at teams in League One now. There's some quality sides and they hard sides as well. I mean, Sunderland it's took them what four seasons. There and there for you know, then you've got your Ipswich, your Chef Wednesday, Oxford oh, doing well. You know, they, they, they took Wednesday about six seasons when before they came up. It's hard and there, it's quality. It's getting out of it, championship. Yeah. League League One now is literally like a second championship, but we're not I wouldn't say we're even good enough for League One at the minute. And that's the God's honest truth. Yeah. If you go down to League One, I can see he's going straight back down to League Two. Okay. Things have got to alter and, and soon and, and quickly for better. Yeah. Otherwise, it, there's, there's, there's no it's way up at the minute. Is it? And like, they're embarrassing to watch, aren't they? I said hmm. that today. It is an embarrassment. I suppose, like <laughs> I said, you've you've got Derby that have above us on goal difference after a 21 point deduction. Yeah. What does that say about our team? Speaks volumes that, doesn't it? Exactly. Speaks volumes that. It's just so frustrating, mate, to be a fan at the minute. And people people might think, oh, no, we're crying, it's all right, just because we've got a club. No, it's not. No. We are in playoffs last year. We haven't won in how long now? 11 games? Mm. We won probably about two games all season. Two games all season, yeah. Not good enough, mate. Depressing and stuff. This board needs to be accountable and it needs to stand up and take notice because these protests and fair play to them, <laughs> however, however daft it might have looked, it was making a point and that's what we need to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think, I think, I mean, people are saying we're going to be a QPR game and things like that, but it's obviously started and if no changes, it's only going to get stronger, isn't it? So it's just going to get louder. Yeah. Point to get uh, raised that today, it's going to get bigger, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know there's, I know there's rumbling. We've gone for a while, there's been rumblings about QPR game, but mm. you know, it started well, now. So, what's it going to be like on Wednesday against Cardiff? Yeah. Well, Houdini couldn't get out of this one, mate. We'll, 
we're going down regardless. But I can guarantee you now, as soon as it's mathematically confirmed, mm. I think that's when, if there's any happy clappers still by that point, even they'll be turning by then. Yeah. I think, it's uh, happen, to be fair, I think I think a lot of them are starting to come round to it like now. When I've seen them on different social media platforms and on Twitter and stuff, even they're coming out with voice concerns. And it's I like... I watched some of your videos the other day. I, said, mm. I, said, I listened to that text you read out and it mm. says it all. 68-year-old guy. Oh, yeah, from uh, from Leicester, yeah. And he from was Leicester. supposed to be coming up with his uh, friend who was a Barmer fan just on art skirts and, you know... And I'm like, that's what we're doing to the club, you know, to fans who's been there for donkey's years and it yeah. just it just like disillusioned me at all. It's it's just flying in face yeah. of everybody because all they're coming out and talking about is fan experience and the driving the driving fans are 50, 60 years away from the club because of what, what they're doing to it. Do it opposite, aren't they? You can't he, he's just treating us with utter contempt and it's so frustrating. Mm. I love the club as much as anyone else, but PMG and Conway and everyone else, just do us all a favour and leave. Give us club back. To be honest, I'd rather... I'll I'll stick my neck out because I'd rather... Seriously, I'd rather go down to non-league and get get a proper set of owners in and build back up. Because at, at least then we'd have, an, we'd have his identity back. We'd have Barnsley back. But and to I'm, be honest, mate, if it carries on like this, I can't really see us getting a win for the rest of the season. It would not surprise me if we don't win again this season. On them words, I want to leave it at that because it's, I think it's been summed up there. We want his identity back. Um, so, yeah, we've got Joel and Sam's view on uh, Bournemouth game and obviously situations surrounding, you know, what's happening. Um like I said, we can't bring you any good news or try and be any positives out from it. It's we call it for what it is. So I want to thank Sam and uh, Joel for joining me on uh, after thoughts at game. I appreciate you joining me. We'll get you on more often as well. Thanks thank for having you. us back on, mate. Thank All right. You. So everybody that's watching, if you want to leave your comments and likes and everything, what we normally say, uh, respectable comments as well. You might agree, disagree. It's all about opinions, but we're all Barnsley. We just want balance of wins, but when's it going to happen? Who knows? But just want to say thanks to everybody watching. You Reds.